Hello, welcome back everyone. So last time we learned how to put a system of linear equations into a special form called low reduced echelon form. And I originally told you we were gonna learn how to solve linear equations, so let's do that now. And linear equations may or may not have unique solutions. So we're gonna not just want to be able to find one solution. If there is one, we're gonna to wanna to be able to talk about all the solutions. And it's gonna be able, very easy to do that in the row reduced echelon form. So as a reminder, row reduced echelon form means that every row is either all zeros or else starts with a one, which is called a pivot. That whenever you have a one, all the other entries, whatever you have a pivot, all the other entries in that pivot column are zero. And there's a condition about how the rows are ordered. And you can definitely go back to the previous video if you want me to talk about this more. So on the left, I've showed you a matrix in row reduced echelon form. And on the right, I've showed you the corresponding system of linear equations. And the pivot variables are boxed. So remember that on the way to our row reduced echelon form, we did various operations like rescaling rows or subtracting a multiple of one row from another. And those operations did not change the set of solutions at all. But in the row reduced echelon form, it's gonna be much easier to understand what the solutions are like. So the first question, so the first thing to do is to look and see do we have a pivot in that right-hand column, in the column where we put the constants on the right-hand side of our equations? So in this example, there is no pivot in that column. But over here, in our next example, well, I didn't really give an example, but if we had a pivot in that column, then all the entries to the left would be zeros, because a pivot is always the leftmost non-zero entry, we would have the equation zero equals one, there are no solutions to zero equals one. So if we have a pivot in that right column, if we have zero equals one, there are no solutions. Otherwise, there are solutions. Now the simplest thing that can happen, and what happened with my example of the cats, the ravens, and the snakes from the last lecture, is the simplest thing that can happen is that all the variables are pivot variables. When that happens, our system of equations just looks like this. Yes, each equation just says one of the pivot variables is equal to some constant. And then there's your solution and you read it off. In general, there may be some variables left over which are not pivot variables. Like this y over here. And I said in the last lecture, we we're gonna call those free variables. So the reason I'm calling them free variables is that we can choose them freely. We can choose them to have any values we like. And then it's easy in the row reduced echelon form to read off the values of the pivot variables in terms of the free variables. So if Y is anything we like here, then X will be one minus two Y and Z will be three. So in general, the free variables can be chosen freely. And the number of free variables, you should think of as the number of degrees of freedom of your system of linear equations. Then we use them to write the pivot variables. Uh, so I just repeated what I said before. I wanna note often we will write this using vector notation. So what's written down here at the bottom of the screen is just the same equation that's higher up, but written using vectors. Uh, that's actually all I have to say about this. This one's a short video, but you should practice this in your sections, not your homework, because it is a, first of all, because you actually want to do this lots of times, but also because you want to understand how this works. This sort of basic understanding of how systems of linear equations works is going to come back for practically everything else we do ever. Okay, and that is the end of the first week's lectures.